set that up because th this is just easier to use while raiding. Uh, so I'd have to reset it up. No problem. Just to let you know, there is a bit of staticky echo. If you want to adjust Damn it. it. Yeah, I know. I know. That's why I helped you the last time, sir. <laughs> Uh, freaking fan it's it's okay this is why i this is why i studied audio and got better at it over the course of two years uh, did it fix itself uh problems do not fix themselves sir but it sounds a little bit oh, that sounds worse I moved the... yeah yeah i moved the microphone or not the microphone the fan yeah that helped a little bit. Don't worry. Hello, good morning. Oh no, his children have eaten him. Whose children? Crow. No! <laughs> Oh, the misery. He might be muted. If we need to recycle Fabio work, boy, that's fine. Bramble, I just couldn't Sir, really find a decent token. I, I have already recycled him, and don't worry. You've recycled him? Yes, he's, he's already with Cade and the others now. No! <laughs> I told you! What would happen in Abomination Vaults? You're just no, giving no, no. me fuel. Half of half of that crew is my character. It is. I, I don't know what to say at this point. Except I have stop, expect Grom to show up there. Yeah. Stop dying. <laughs> that just feeds Gauntlet. Okay. Hey, 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 hey! I didn't kill Baxter. Not, neither did I. Tony did. I, <laughs> he feels so bad, man. <laughs> I I asked him if he wanted... Do you want to get your friend out of the dungeon? No, he's fine. Okay. The dungeon collapses in on itself. <laughs> they're escaping. They're panicking. They're getting out. And then they suddenly realize once they get back home ready to go to sleep. Oh, you meant Baxter. <laughs> no, I even said his name. I said his name and said, like, don't you want this? Now he can stay there. We'll put him in park. Uh, I don't have my Who's familiar is Dashi? So, oh. Dashki. Dashi is the uh, right. little nine-tailed fox familiar of Feya, who is the iconic witch. I have all these examples in case we had a new player that wanted to see, you know, like, what the classes are about and uh, what are some of their abilities and archetypes and things like that, just to give them, you know, like, a pre-made that they can look at and, uh, you know, take examples from. I think I have everything except the monk out. And we only need one more person because Tony is not going to make it this week due to family obligations. I pretty much know what I want to play, but I'm going to see what others, other people also want to play. No sweat. That's what Session I'm Zero is all away. about. <laughs> oh, Crow, you're alive! I am alive. Why do you sound like you're Crow. so far away? Do I sound like I'm far? Everyone's been saying that. I don't get it. I now you sound like you're closer. Thing. Oh, okay. It's probably my headset. Yeah. It might be getting old. It was $15 two years ago. Trying to figure out... Well, I'm not really trying to figure out anything, but... Ancestry's heritage stuff. Yeah, 
Yeah, don't worry, you'll have plenty of time to do that. We're gonna do some fun stuff first, though, before we get down into any of the mechanical stuff. We're gonna do some introductions. We're gonna discuss, you know, like, if you have some... some things that you want to share with the group about your experiences with either D&D &D or Pathfinder, what you enjoy about it. And also, you know, just get to know each other because you'll be... you'll be with each other your entire academic career. Oof, that is uh, quite a length of time. Yep, the campaign starts you as a student, and students inevitably become teachers, and those teachers have to fight off aliens. Yeah, so it's a trigger anime, basically. Maybe. Just wait for wings. Give them 15 minutes. That is my courtesy time. And then we'll begin. Theron Ray Critic? Cleric? Critic. Yes, Critic. Yes, Cleric. So, Kyra is the rogue's girlfriend. Merazil, and uh, they have they have kissed several times in the artwork and whatnot. Oh wait, are these like characters from the books? Like the yes, they're called iconics. They're the pre-made characters. I honestly really love how they look. So so flavorful, yeah, I... honestly. Yeah, I wish I could see the witch's character stuff oh you can click on her you can I, see her i can't all yeah. i see is biography up uh, you should be able to see everything because steam view has ownership of the characters as well i put everyone for ownership so uh characters. no i i cannot also see huh. if i'm supposed to see like stats and stuff like that yeah yeah I, hang on hang on let me do the witch first configure ownership owner now try. Now click on her. Yep. Now I can. Okay. That was weird. It's set to limited, but the heroes folder themselves. Owner. There we go. You should be able to click on all of them now. Um, I apologize. Yep. Yeah, don't take a look at Kadrick. Why not? Just don't look don't look at his alignment and whatnot. Um, okay. We're taking some, uh, how do we put this? Well, you can be a room lord if you want to. This campaign takes all types of magic users. So if you have rune magic and stuff like that and a well of sin, you know, people are not going to judge you. What is a rune lord? A rune lord is an ancient slave owner. And before, uh, what was it, Starfall, they put themselves to sleep and told their slaves, like, hey, wake us up when this is all done and you're dead. And that, you know, the, uh, the former slaves just, uh, never bothered to wake them up. So they started waking up on their own, and that became Rise of the Rune Lords. Oh, yeah, no, nah, I just, I'm taking some character cues from, uh, a previous character. Okay. Just with a, what I think would be a better class fit. Sure. <laughs> Cade makes his return. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> he already returned. <laughs> yeah. This is Kate 2.0. Yo, Amiri has a bastard sword too. Why does this say large next to it? So she's uh she has an oversized one. That's bigger oh. than her her size should be able to hold because she has a special a special thing she gets later on which increases weapon sizes and stuff. She is She's pretty much known for having the largest weapon. So, she has 
the female human animation in World of Warcraft. <laughs> ah. Uh, yeah. Here, here's I don't thing. know if you ever played Alliance. I, I did not, unfortunately. I only played Dwarves. So, Titan, Titan Instinct Lord. for Barbarians. When they rage, they get big. And their weapon also increases in size. Because her weapon is oversized and becomes even more oversized, she gets even more damage when it increases. She is very tough for a level 1. Wait a minute. Do I need to actively change my rage effect? How do I change my rage effect to match my instinct? Ah. Uh. Wings. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So I believe we can get started. Why don't we uh, start off with uh, brief introductions and whatnot? Just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, whether or not, you know, you've played D&D &D or Pathfinder before and whatnot, what your experience with TUI is, and, uh, you know, what kind, of, uh, what kind of student of a magical school that you would like to be. And if you want, I can go first. It's up to you guys. Yeah, introduce yourself, DM. All right, my name is Bramble. I have been running games for over two decades. Most of them have been D&D. My last straw was Empire of Ghouls 5e. That's when the straw broke the camel's back and I was all like, you know what? People are so static and set in their ways with how D&D has been going. I need something new. And I tried Pathfinder 2nd Edition and I have never looked back. I very much enjoy spellcasters. Well, I can go second if you want. Sure. <laughs> Hi, my name is DJ. Uh, I'm not experienced in music. I have DJ as a username from uh, for other reasons, but M misleading. Yeah. Yes. I'm also not an assassin, but that's another story. <laughs> Yeah, basically, I mostly just played D&D 5th edition for about two, two and a half years at this point. I'm still playing it. Yes, I do admit that there's a flawed system, but I like the simplicity of it here and there. And I only got into Pathfinder about a month ago, where I started, like, actually examining it. And I only have two sessions. Well, one combat under my belt for Pathfinder. And... Pretty much, that's about it. Uh, regarding characters, I'm actually thinking of playing an investigator or a rogue. One or the other. Most likely investigator. Okay. I'll go next. Uh, hi, yeah, my screen name is Wings. Uh, you, my name is Jack, though. I'm so sorry, sir, you're so you. soft, I cannot hear you. I am. Let me turn myself up. Hold on. Please. Once I find the room, it's better. Why doesn't somebody else go while I fix this? No sweat. All right, I can go. 
<clears throat> I am Travis, also known as Lighters or Mist. This is going to be my second campaign from session one. I made a brief guest appearance in another campaign, but due to time, didn't work out. Uh, so I'm fairly new to tabletop RPGs in general. Uh, in RPGs, I much prefer spellcasters as well, like Bramble, but I also like to branch out and try new things. So I will be playing a barbarian or a sorcerer, but most likely barbarian. All right, can you guys hear me now? Perfectly. Yeah, better. There we go. Uh, downside to having children is that they play with your things. I didn't realize I turned them my mic volume down. No sweat. Um, cool. Yeah, as I was saying, uh, I go by Wings online, but everyone just calls me Jack because I don't care if you know my name. <laughs> and um, yeah, I've been playing tabletop games since second edition, so about 25 years now. Um, and... I've never been much into the D&D &D side of things. I've played every edition. I really liked 4th edition, but that was short-lived. Um, I played other systems, though, like Savage Worlds and GURPS. Um, so I've been playing a long time. I enjoy the role-playing aspect of it. In fact, most of the games that I play when I don't have time to do this are just pure role-playing games with no dice. Um, as for characters, um, I like playing martial characters, uh, which is part of the reason why I did not like D D because it's pretty much against marshals mm -hmm. and uh yeah for this i wanted to try something different something that i've never done and go forward with it so i'm gonna play a female character because i've never done that and uh i would like to play the thaumaturge which is more geared towards uh just knowing all the skills uh, it's kind of an interesting setup i love that character so far but uh i'll, I'll change to whatever we need I would prefer that you play what you enjoy. All right, and I guess I'm last. I'm Crow. Uh, I played tabletops for just about a decade, I guess. Uh, I started with 4th edition, and I wasn't a huge fan. The 5th edition was very simple, but then you can't really do much with it. And Pathfinder and Starfinder have been a lot of fun. This is, what, my third game of Pathfinder? Over a year-ish, so I kind of get it. But uh, normally, I play marshals, like fighters and monks, and I just beat up everything. Uh, so this time, I'm probably going to do Spellcaster, because it sounds like we already got a tank and a barbarian. Uh, with the setting, I found a pretty cool backstory that works well. So, uh, I guess that's about it. Okay. Worth mentioning that in this uh, Pathfinder 2nd Edition, barbarians are more glass cannons than they are tanks. Yeah, Barbarian's not, so, like, it, I mean, we'll be fine. It's still a frontline character, or it can be. Uh, the, our last game, <laughs> for the first couple sessions, our frontline character was a sorcerer, so... That was a bad decision we'll be fine. on his part. He was the one that survived the longest, so I don't need to hear it. Okay, okay. <laughs> to be fair, I still didn't die when I came in. Yes, I, yeah. it wasn't for lack of trying. No, I and, almost died a lot. I took Die Hard for and, that very reason. And Cade lasted longer than Crow got to play. So Very true, Cade is still alive. Full disclosure. No. <laughs> normally, when I DM, I make it so that it is challenging. However, the scope of this campaign is different from Abomination Vaults. I cannot DM the same way that I did that campaign. The purpose of this campaign is to take your student, become a teacher, and raise the reputation of the magical school. Things are going to happen differently. There are different subsystems. There's not going to be any, like, adventure diving and whatnot, and it's just like, you're dead, make a new character. That's not how this is going to work, unless you want it to. But it's going to be weird when the magical school starts running out of students and all these people who keep applying are just mysteriously dying under adventurous circumstances. I'm not sure that's the kind of campaign you want, but maybe you do. I guess we'll find out. Depends on how dumb we are. Huh? It has nothing to do with intelligence. It has everything to do 
with uh, what you want. Uh, within this campaign, there is still like your typical combat, etc. Mm hmm. Okay. There's also studying and cramming. We're going to go over those subsystems and determine if they are what our, our group wants. Or if we're just Very going to... In those. Yeah. Or maybe you want to ignore that subsystem. It gives you the option. You're not forced to do it. So, before we begin, I want to do something fun. I want you to go to the little card in chat that says 3d dice settings or you can go to the cog wheel at the top right hand corner and i believe they changed it around a little bit uh, you may need to uh scroll up to the top to see the 3d die message yeah chat. yeah i'll uh, i'll erase some things that i posted there you go so under the 3D dice settings, when you click it, you're going to get this little pop-up window. And I want you all to create your own unique dice that you're going to use for this campaign. And then do like some practice rolls and whatnot. There should have been a dice tray there. I'll make sure that's loaded in next time. But basically the way you roll is backslash R 1d20 and i apologize for that i shall have the dice tray for next time that makes it much much easier backslash r space 1d20 there you go also why am i Cairo? i don't know I, I just don't know. Maybe your, you selected? Your was assigned to you. Yeah? Yeah. Nope. I have it. Oh, I have her clicked. That's yes, it. you have her selected. Well, I like how this is going so far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so while you're, while you're doing that, I'd like to ask a question. Are you familiar with blind roles when it comes to skill checks? Yes, it's when the GM rolls and doesn't showcase the result, right? Normally. However, if you look at the dice roller right below the chat message, you'll see on the drop down menu default roll mode, public roll, private GM roll, blind GM roll, self roll. When you change it to blind GM roll, which is how you'll roll your skills and then do your skill roll, You'll see a question mark D20 appear on your screen, but the result will be shown to me. So I have no need to do your rolls for you. You just have to know whether you're rolling publicly or privately. Yep, I saw that, but no one else did. This is how skills like perception checks and whatnot are going to be made in the campaign. I need to get you used to this because I need to know that you aren't metagaming the information that I'm giving you. Sometimes I need to lie to you, especially when it comes to knowledge checks that you failed. This is not done out of malice or anything like that. When you get the wrong information, I have to make sure that your character behaves as if they thought the information was accurate. Unlike in D&D, when you roll publicly and you, you roll a fail, you've known that you failed. Under certain circumstances, you will not know that you have failed. Does that make sense to everyone? Yep. Absolutely. And there is a, a shortcut that you can hold while you're clicking on your skills in your sheet to do a blind GM roll. I'm looking it up right now because I forgot it. No sweat. That sounds like valuable information everyone should have. All right. Yep, you can use some of the iconics to practice rolls as well, if you like. Show off the pretty, pretty dice.
and uh, I'm gonna start showing you some stuff. How many people here are familiar with the world of Galarian? I, myself, not at all. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I have made it through most of the lore books in my boredom. Oh, well, that's... You'll enjoy this, then. As I showcase to you a brief overview of the world. So at the top, we have It's Fucking Cold. All the way down at the bottom where it says, I bless the rains down in Africa. That's where our campaign will take place. And you can see within this journal entry is an actual map that you can click on right below it, which will show the actual world of Galeria. And you will oh, see that the... That's, uh... Looks very Europe and Africa y. Yeah, it it is. <laughs> Wait now, a minute. What what's wrong? What, what I happened? really do love your uh, your map here. This is great. Oh, it's not no, mine. I was, this is from Reddit. I, I was just marveling over the fact that we were playing our last campaign on an island off of Mega New York. You, you, yes, you were on Make a New York. That's what Absalon is. Where's Taldor? Taldor is Camelot, but shitty. It's not the Devil Fascist Empire? No, Devil Fascist... Oh, oh wait, maybe it is. No, Devil Fascist would be Cheliax. Oh, yeah, you're right, Cheliax. Yep. Yeah, yeah for... Taldor is Camelot, but shitty. Yep, yep, and yep. that actually is an appropriate definition of it too. It is. We we have we have Temple of Elemental Evil for Pathfinder Infinite in Taldor. We're almost in the temple. That's interesting. Yo, I kind of like low key want to try playing in Russian Narnia. <laughs> so Russian Narnia is uh is in a bad situation with uh where it's located because you see the crumbled empire right there it got better uh that's where the rune lords used to be oh then you also have fantasy transylvania that is geb that is where the blood lords campaign takes place then of course you have the no, demon that's... waste oh, geb is at the bottom necromancy nation is oh that geb one? is yep oh my mistake, I'm sorry. And if anybody's ever interested, I'll tell you why the steampunk thing is in the middle between necromancy and wizards. It's actually a pretty fun story that goes with most of the lore. Oh, please do. All right, so long before Absalom was even there, there were these two wizards that hated each other, Nex and Geb. Yeah. Um, they kept making themselves immortal through stupid shit. Um, but uh, they basically went around the world fighting each other, doing all kinds of weird stuff. Um, Geb really didn't care about living creatures, so he just made this army of necromancers uh, down where he was at, and he's like, leave me alone, Nex. And Nex was like, no. And so he went and united all the nations that were up where it says wizards there um, and started a war with uh, Geb. They fought back and forth, like doing crazy high-level magic, and uh, it basically fucked up magic. Uh, on that area where they're at, which is why it's steampunk area there, because they had to use technology because magic doesn't work there anymore. Oh, man. Um, I should have had you for the Blood Lords campaign. Uh, and then uh, they fought and fought and fought. Geb eventually poisoned the land, like literally uh, made it so nothing could grow in the wizard spot. Uh and then he was like, well, I won. And he got all depressed and killed himself. And now he, but he came back as a ghost because he couldn't kill Nex. Nex, however, like disappeared from the plane. No one knows where he's at. Um, in the Blood Lords campaign, you learned that like, no, no, shit's no, happening no, 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 and no, everyone no, thinks. No, 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 no. It's in the, op it's in the I, opening. Dude. I know, I know, but don't, don't, don't confuse them. Don't confuse them with the other Okay, you got it. Yep. <laughs> you got it then. Thank you. But yeah, Nex is gone. Geb is there. That's where we're sitting right now. Thank you, sir. Oh, that was. Right. That sounds like a fever dream, but. Yes! Sounds amazing. 
Yeah. yeah. Every Bramble, bit of lore Bramble here is that. The blood lore campaign. <laughs> yep. 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 Okay, I'm I'm glad we have a lore expert with us that uh, actually knows more than I do. That makes it so I can rely on you for certain questions, and I like that. Okay. I am not. The You'll sort have of to ask person. because I'm yes. making a point not to be the person that says it without being prompted. I can I can definitely prompt you. I will always prompt my players and spotlight them, sir. I'm glad that we're actually doing this in session zero right now because this is part of me getting to know you. And I really like the fact that you are aware of the lore. That's great. That's going to help us a lot. Because as you just saw, I get things wrong. You know, they didn't really have a great map during the Pathfinder 1 era of yeah. all of this stuff. And so you can learn about things, but it's really hard to like figure out where everything's happening. Yes. Uh, like relative to things. Like you would never guess that uh, like this campaign where we're at takes place right next to the steampunk land of Alkenstar. Ah, that makes more sense now. Yes. Outlaws of Alkenstar. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's why it's like the Wild West. It's pretty fun. Okay. Yeah, because magic doesn't work there. It's like crazy. All right. Uh, what can what can you tell us of I Bless the Rains down in Africa, where, where the campaign is actually taking place in the Mwangi Expanse? Maybe you know of yeah, the uh, um, Great I'm, Bazaar. I do, and I'm still reading about this one. It's actually my most recent uh, acquisition, and... It is also the most boring of them to read so far because of the way it's presented. <laughs> but um, so I'll give you what I have so far. Okay. Uh, basically, the area here is where it's, you know, I bless the rain is surrounded by mountains. And it is also the oldest land on Glorian where creatures were. Like this is the original like cradle of life. Um, there are many nations that have risen and fallen throughout here, but a long, long, long time ago, at the time when Absalom, the guy who you know raised that island out of the sea uh, and called it after himself, was around, there was this other mage called Jitembe, um, and I think he's still around, but I'm not sure. Um, and he went and basically stabilized the magic in the area and uh, founded a city and a college for everybody to... Uh, come and learn magic safely. Like, so they don't really care what's going on as long as they do it well. There's a lot more, like, in terms of creatures and stuff like that, but the land is truly inhospitable. So you can think of uh, all the pressures of evolution that would have put on everybody here. Thank you very much. That was very impressive. All right. So, who here knows about Harry Potter? Me. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go so, with yes. <laughs> all right. So, we, we kind of know the gists of what's going to happen in a magical school, right? There are going to be rivals. There are going to be friends. There are going to be, you know, outright enemies. I, I can tell you right now there's no Voldemort, though. Aww. But you already gave away the plot with aliens, so alien Voldemort. Not necessarily, no, because guess what? Elves are aliens. Not. They just... They are. Yeah. So are gnomes. They, they came from the first, the, the first world, the Fae, yeah. So... What sort of things are you expecting at a magical school? Let, let me ask you all that question. I'm expecting to be able to create the body double that can go to classes instead of me. Okay. We found the burnout, boys. <laughs> um... Yeah, I think ultimately I, I would really like the opportunity to experience some of the like higher level artifacts or things, uh, not necessarily as a plot device, but, you know, I would imagine that 
things like that that we wouldn't normally get to see in a campaign would be in a place like that. Yeah, I mean, basically also, it's a magic school founded by an old mage, legendary mage. So there's probably going to be some really interesting artifacts around and secrets. Hmm. Hello? I'm here. I yep. hear every word you say. Okay. I thought that disconnected a bit because no, everybody no. went silent for an extended period of time for, you for me. Well, the, the the reason why that happens is the groups I get are overly polite and they either talk e over each other to the point where we keep apologizing and nobody talks or we just wait for someone because no one wants to be rude. I feel personally attacked. Yes. <laughs> so why don't you answer my question? What do you expect at the magical school? Oh. I expect that we're gonna flesh out a lot of the a lot of the systems as far as like I was taking a look at the player's guide. Mm hmm So they give a brief overview of what seems to be like Hogwarts houses. They just call them branches. Yeah. I can tell you where so yours is going to be. Which one? Right there. So, let me, yep, let me teach you how to do pings. Hold and click left, uh, the left mouse button. That's alt. Uh, I did it wrong. Yeah, you yeah, did, but, you did the next thing. <laughs> yes. And if you hold left and click alt, you'll do the danger sign. And as a DM... I have the ability to move your focus on the map. I really like that change. But can you yeah, that was on the building again? Sure. I uh, had every possible window over this. Ah. There I have. Uh, also, uh, interjection and request. Can we please get the pop out add on? Ah, yes. I'm sorry. That didn't get uh, turned on. Hang on. Hang on. This is exactly why I have session zero, is because I make mistakes. Let's see, there it is. Pop out, and where is dice tray? Let me turn that on too. And do you happen to have the top action bar thing? The token bar? No. The one that shows all your actions? Yeah, that thing. Which one is that called? I will find it for you. I, you. I have to go through the... I'm realizing the feature where you can click and do a blind roll as part of an add-on, and so now I need to watch this video because I'm also setting up to GM a game. Oh, Hold on. No sweat. Take your time, sir, and thank you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll watch through this video and let you know before our next session. Let's yeah. See. yeah I'm not Token about it right Action now. HUD. I'm pretty sure it's that. Do this yeah, again. But that is the one. There you go. Didn't I say that one? Yes. Thank you, Bramble. Thank you, DJ. Thank you, everybody. Yes, that's the one. Okay. So, now you have your dice tray. Now you can roll the fancy dice. The fancy dice. And Spire Dorm is where you guys will specifically be rooming. But it's not just going to be the player characters. You're going to have a lot of other people there. People that might become your rivals. People that might become your friends. It all depends on, you know, what you want. Is it built in Aspire or is it a low built? No, it's just a like name. Dorm. It's, it's just a dorm. Oh, so there's no throwing your rival outside of the spiral. Uh, this is not Sparta. It could be. Yeah, no, wanting no, murder it... is probably not the best path forward. So let's talk about that and how you'll interact with the other students. This is not a dueling academy like Yu-Gi-Oh! And, and crap like that. This is... You, the students do not fight each other. 
Belly armies? Yeah, like, in Harry Potter, the students fought each other. That that was different. They were in the middle of a war. You are not in the middle of a war. This is a school. You they also had to sell books. Yes. You you are you are here to learn. <laughs> but there is a legacy with the ten magical warriors that the uh, the original creator made. And they do have a very huge tablet with the names of thousands of mages that have uh, trained at this academy. And one we day... all Valorous. This is fun. <laughs> and one day, you may have your name engraved on this great tablet. So now that we've all got the basics and we've got pop out, we've got dice tray and everything set up now, and a couple people have already voiced what they wanted to make, who here knows for certain that they're going to go through with their original concept for the character? Me. Okay. So I do believe I am. Okay. So for the people oh, who Oh, go ahead. So uh, what uh, then did everybody say that they were going to be playing? There's that, that's Barbarian? We'll, yep, we're going to recap. We're going to recap. Uh, can we turn off the music in the... Yes, okay. you, can. you can. turn so under, it out. Yep. You can turn it down to yourself under uh, music Glo and you have global volume controls. Yes, that is that is what I was going to mention. Global volume controls allows you to control it on the user side. Since I am streaming through Foundry and through a separate audio track connection, I have the music playing. You can either turn it down or eliminate it completely. But be warned, I do use sound effects and other visual cues as well in order to uh, describe things that are happening or are going to happen. So there would be some audio in scenes, especially if someone's sneaking around or something else happens. Just so you know for next time. No, I just was saying for the this session, mm -hmm. which is one of it. That's fine. Get it off. That's cool. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I. Um, yeah. No, I would. I would like to stick with my original character concept. Uh, and from what I heard, uh, we went through here. I am going to write in the chat everything that I heard for classes and uh, anything I missed. Just let me know. Well, you. Uh, you also should know before you start spamming chat. I believe you have the ability to create journal entries. And the nice thing about version 10 is that it allows you all to edit it simultaneously without overwriting each other. Oh. Somebody gonna create then like a shared notes one? Yeah. You definitely can. Yeah, they're, they're like items and then we can all go through them. There you go. Uh, do you use uh, GM screen, Bramble, for stuff? I have not put it up for this uh, for this session, but I do have it. Okay. I, I've so I just want to throw out here. I've not actually played more than ten minutes <laughs> on VTT or on Foundry yet, so mm -hmm. uh, everything's new to me. But I'm setting it up, like I said, for my own campaign, and I really liked that. But uh, if you don't want to turn it on, that's cool. But it would be nice just to have that little tray down there. Sure. Let's see. We don't need it right now. Oh, that's that's okay, sir. Just want to see if I have it loaded in or not. Uh, GM notes or GM screen? GM screen. Okay. I don't seem to have that offhand. I will make a note of it okay. for next time. Yeah, because it might be useful to have that. Cause it's just like a little shelf at the bottom where we can pop up and get common notes. And if we're doing like the subsystems or something, having the rules down there for us all to see real quick might be helpful. Of course. Did that get updated to version 10? Uh, if it's not, I will... Uh, I'll fix it because I have an abundance of time. 
and Ooh. that's what my normal job is is to write code so oh nice. nice man i picked a winner here you got a forever gm who wanted to be a player real bad so yeah ah <laughs> that's that's why i feel this kindred Sounds spirit thing <laughs> As any of my players will tell you about all the JavaScript and graphic works I have done for the campaigns. And we did a one-page RPG, and Bramble was, uh... I was a badger that thought he was Trump. It was great. <laughs> you were a badger who thought he was Shadow who thought he was Trump. Yes. <laughs> I don't get to play that often. I go wild. <laughs> it was great. Uh, it was so funny. All right, so did I you, gave. Did you see I, the bond to that? No, I didn't. I didn't record that, sir. Wow. So I made a shared notes for you. You all have ownership. Sounds like it's time for you guys to collaborate. You might not even need me now. Amateurs, barbarian. That's the two of them, yeah. And I don't... I know the you other two were talking about a sorcerer and an investigator, but I don't, I'm not sure if you were set on that. Yeah, I'm doing wizard. Muscle Working wizard. On. Universalist. No, <laughs> not yet. Not, yet. <laughs> not, not a muscle wizard? No. If you're going to be the muscle, then I'll be the actual wizard. I'm, I'm, I haven't messed with wizard in 2e too much, so it's there's a lot. As a wizard... A universalist, yeah. All of us will be a wizard or a druid in this one by second level. Yep. Yeah, because of archetypes, right? Well, archetypes yep. allow you to do things, and free archetypes allows you to expand your character a lot. However, multi-class archetypes cannot be taken with the free archetype feat. Multi-class archetypes can only be taken with class feats. Wait. Yes. I'll read in the player guide. It made it seem like we were all going to multi-class in the second level. Second level is when you will be getting a free archetype from the variant rule. Let me show you the archetypes and the difference between archetypes and multi-class archetypes. Here you go. I'm going to post this link in Discord for you to the Archives of Nethys, one of the most handy-dandy sites you will ever get for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. At the top, yep. multi-class archetypes. These are the archetypes you take with dedications towards a class. They can only be taken once. If you are a monk, you cannot take a multi-class archetype in monk. Basically, when you take your base class, it locks you out of taking a multi-class archetype for that same class. You can only spend multi-class archetypes with class feats for different classes. Everything that says other archetypes down underneath multi-class archetypes are the free archetypes that you may take for your dedication on level 2. Yeah. Okay, so we have to put the multi-class archetype in the correct slot is what you're saying. Yes, which is class feet. Right. So we are all multi-class at level two. No. It just. Well, that's what the player, the player's guide says. Even though any class works well in the strength of thousands of adventure path, the campaign mm -hmm. where students attend a magic school wouldn't seem very magical unless all heroes can cast spells. Yes. Each character in this adventure path gains either the druid multi-class archetype. Or a wizard multi-class archetype to reflect the primal and arcane teaching traditions of the school, respectively. And that is done for free or with the feet? That should be done for free. And uh, full disclosure, I was not planning to play this, so I have read the beginning of the the actual AP because I got it through the Humble Bundle as well. I will and trust I you saying that that's supposed to be free. That's I haven't read enough to metagame, so that's... you're good. Yep, don't worry, don't worry. I trust you. I trust all my players. Yeah. Well, no, I'm, I literally have not read enough to know. 
but I do remember this being that it's a free archetype. So uh, okay, it, this this multi-class archetype is a free archetype. Okay, so it looks like you won't be getting the variant rule free archetype then, since the adventure path says this. At least that's yep. my understanding, because otherwise you would have two. Correct. It's we would get one for free, and then if we want another one, we have to spend a class feed on it. Yeah. So. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep, so we will not be using the variant rule free archetype for this campaign since you'll be getting either wizard or druid for free. And everyone knows how to do that with the dedications. But, uh, sure. Okay, so if you click on it. wizard or druid <laughs> under multi-class, you will see feat 2 druid dedication, things like that, that say archetype dedication multi-class. The prerequisites for which are Wisdom 14 and Int 14. Are the prerequisites necessary to have these for Not free? In this. Not in this. Yeah, Player's Guide yeah, says no. Player guide. Okay. I'm glad we clarified that. Yeah, it's kind of a an interesting... Uh, the thing they did there. So mm -hmm. hold up, we are not going to be taking the free archetype rule. Uh, no, we will not have the variant rule because you get druid okay. or wizard. Sorry, this is how I understand it, is okay. we are using the free archetype rule, but we are required to first pick up either wizard or druid dedication. That's how I see it. And okay. the, you may only select free archetype feats of that dedication for free. And not others. Mm -hmm. Correct. If you want to pick up a different dedication, you need to spend your, your class feats on I thought it was just... Um, go ahead, bud. Sorry. Hold up. Let me just go back and read no a problem. bit. That's why that's why we have session zero, so we can clarify these things. Yeah, I think it's they're basically saying, hey, you have to do this and uh, we're just going to make it so you don't have to, like, essentially break a character build in order to do it. Yeah, because the prerequisites of Wisdom 14 and 14 are not going to work for someone who starts as a fighter or whatnot. Or a barbarian. Right, Big dum dum. I'll pull up the thing real quick, but I'm pretty sure it says you do not need to meet the requirements for this. But it's a good idea to right. pick the one that matches your highest score of those two. Mm -hmm. Basically, no one here is uh, going to be casting uh, the uh, spells uh, with the expectation that their class DC is going to be used. All right. Well, yeah, it, it doesn't say the... It says only you can take uh, archetypes from that dedication. Mm -hmm. Completely random note ramble. I have, according to my wizard, both widen spell and reach spell, which means I can extend the range by 30 feet, and depending on what it is, extend the range. Would I be able to use those both? It just says if your next action is cast spell. Mm -hmm. So, in then, order to do that, each of them, does it take an action, or is it a free action? Because I know Reach Metamagic uh, adds an action to the spell. Aha, uh -huh, there it is. It says action. Yes. Got the, it. Never mind. Reading. Yes. Science. Yeah. Yes. I don't cast spells. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm unclear if, like, a sorcerer has to... Nope, it says each character. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. All right, mm -hmm. we're good. All right, but before we move on, any more questions about how the archetype is going to be handled with wizard and druid? Uh, yes. Okay. I, question: Since it is going in the free, the free archetype space with, that we've been using, mm -hmm. does from that point on, my class feats can either be wizard, druid whichever I pick, mm -hmm. or Barbarian, correct? Uh, barbarian will have to be taken with the class feat. Yeah, no, the wizard... No, I'm talking about, like, if I wanted a wizard feat. 
Uh, you can't Would take the general class? wizard feats. You can only take dedication feats. And if yep. you read the free archetype thing, it says that you get one at every even level mm -hmm. for free. You don't have to take it as an oh. addition. Yeah, it's in addition, not uh, replacing. Oh, okay. That is so much better because like, I was more concerned about it losing out on playing the actual barbarian part. Oh, yeah. No, it's like... I would not play the Thaumaturge if I had to spend stuff on wizard feats because this class basically lives on uh, feats, so. Yeah, it's basically just free bonuses. A bit. Okay. Now that we've got that settled, I want to share with you the very confusing and probably life-changing subsystems. Yay. So, if you click load PDF, and I love this. Yeah, that's new in version 10. I love it also. Yep. You'll get the Life in the Academy. And Life in the Academy will tell you all about the different people that come to the school. And you remember Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw and stuff like this. Well, they have sun, Tempest Sun Mages and Rain Scribes and things like that. And depending on which house you're in, you, uh, they emphasize certain qualities of their students. Like Emerald Bows emphasize camaraderie. They're Hufflepuff. And... Would you say the Uzanjati are more like Ravenclaw? I've not read enough into that to figure that out yet. That's okay. That's why we're going to do it together. So there are I five. I don't see a Slytherin. What, what, I, what don't you see, sir? Slytherin. I don't what? see a Slytherin. There are no evil people at this academy. <laughs> That's why. Slytherin isn't evil. Slytherin's yes, it is. not evil either. Slytherin oh, is uh, not necessarily it's presented evil. As evil. Black okay. and white to children. It's not evil. Okay. <laughs> I'll uh, die on this one. Okay. I would say the Tempest Sun... Uh, I would say the Rain Scribes actually are probably closest to Slytherin. Okay. <laughs> I digress. Go ahead, <laughs> That's uh, That's okay. I just don't want another... These are the, these are the Harry Potter uh, fanfics that I've read and have you link them to me again. I'll link you that one no, again, Bramble. I don't. You need to read it. It's well, I do not. Really good. I really don't. I got you. I got you, Wings. It's actually uh, top tier. Better than any no, of the Harry Potter books. My God. We got uh, a lot of porn, though. Help me. So. No, it's okay. GMs, don't do it. share this with your players. My, uh, my roommate in grad school was a person that wrote Harry Potter fan fiction. I've had enough of that for several lifetimes. So please, let's not do that. Yes, so GMs, share this with your players. The details of the Academia subsystem aren't a secret. This article is spoiler-free and written from the player's perspective, so you can share it with your players and help them make informed decisions for their characters' academic careers. And that's something we're going to be talking about, you know, like, uh, where does a thaumaturge fit into this? What kind of thaumaturge do you want to play? Uh, do, you, do you value the bonds of friendship? Do you care for adaptability? Do you care only about power? You know, like, uh, choosing which one you're in is going to not only help you with assignments, because critical failures on assignments for that specific branch are going to turn into failures, so it helps you out there. But it's also going to, you know, set you up later on in your career, possibly as a teacher. Also, if you look down at Table 1... You get some stuff. And so would benefits. We wanna... Go ahead. So would we want to choose something that is within the skills that we are going to be good at or not? That is entirely up to you. Because I did see later a bit like study activities. Mm -hmm. So... You need to do one of the branches' associated skills against the DC. So basically, Correct. for example, if I want to go rain scribes, but my medicine and survival, and probably nature is going to be pretty bad. 
mm-hmm. then it's going to be pretty hard for me to advance. Yes. So you have to think about, do you want to be a success academically, or is your success going to be more in exploration and in prowess of the, uh, you know, in battle? I you don't have to go everything through the study. Yeah. So, and that's it. Uh, go ahead. You could just be a C student. Yeah. It's okay. You could be a mediocre student and still become a teacher. The way that it works is that uh, renowned and reputation are also going to factor in to your development at the school because reputation is so incredibly important to this academic institution. They get a lot of money, a lot. And if you're their poster boy, hey, he, he got C's, mm, scholarship. These get degrees. Yep, uh, there's a, there's a section down here that says academia, no thanks. We could skip this subsystem if you wanted. But I believe... No, no crying. I believe... There's no crying in baseball. That crying is a free action. I believe that it will add a lot to the role-playing. But that's... I need to hear from your perspective. I can't just force you to do it. I mean, I think part of the charm of the campaign is the subsystem, so... But... If no one else wants to do it, I'm okay. I'm not against it either, especially since a lot of this subsystem seems to be part downtime. Like, uh, I was reading in the player guide, like, hey, like studying and stuff like that could be done in downtime, going to mm-hmm. classes, etc., etc. So you, so don't, we you... can still enjoy ad- adventure while doing this thing. Exactly. And the studying during downtime isn't the only thing you're doing. Maybe you have to hunt down a book that's been lent out several times that some lowlife never returned. Maybe there's something in an ancient ruins nearby that you need for a, a class or maybe a project that you could all, you know, band together and try to get. You know, role-playing the academia is going to be part of that fun too, and that's when I'm going to be able to introduce optional materials or dungeons to you that you can decide, you know, like, uh, do, do we want to do this rather than progress the plot? Or do we want to, you know, like spotlight ourselves and say like, hey, we got this and we, you know, separated ourselves from the NPC students. Maybe you'll all be from the same branch, who knows? Hard, hardly. Yeah. I'm all for having this extra system. Okay. Yep, I would actually almost prefer it. It seems like, I don't want to say an integral part, because obviously you can skip it, but it seems like it adds a lot. We will we will have it then. It's not as bad as the circus subsystem, which was basically just skill checks. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I want to be a clown. There, there was a role to be a clown. <laughs> Nor is it anywhere near as complicated as Kingmaker's subsystem. Kingmaker makes me cry. Three years. I just looking at it, it, it is a, it is a game that will take three years. We could get some people that can dedicate that. That would that sounds you, like fun. You will not have a bramble. Campaign? You will not have a bramble to run it, unfortunately. I'm going to I'm not going to do that. Yeah, and I don't like playing in or GMing sandboxes, so... Yeah. uh, Not for me. Yeah, just chapter one of the Ruby Phoenix adventure was terrifying. With that island. All right. So, you kind of got an idea of what character you want to play. Um, Do you have an idea of what branch you'd like to be in? Can you reshare that ramble? Uh, it's completely in the journal, sir. All you have to do is go over to journal. And it'll be under PDF students, life in the academy. 
Uh, we don't have access to that one. I will give you access to that now. Yep. There you go. Okay. Yep, yep. I, I know where I'm probably going to go. So hold up. We select like the primary one, and I think the player guide also said the secondary one. Secondary what? Branch. branch. Oh, branch. Yeah. Um, it says you should also choose a secondary branch that supplements your education. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Yes. Yes. I'm going like you can't be part of like both Hufflepuff and Gryffindor. I see what you're saying. Yes. Because they're, they're areas of study. They're branches from the same tree. Yes. You'll have a primary and a secondary like you would a major and a minor. Yes. Yeah, I'm the thaumaturge. I absolutely need to go with the one that believes in reading old stories. Uzunjati? Yeah, Uzunjati. And my backup will probably be Cascade Bearers. Okay. Yep. Okay. I'm pro probably Tempest Sun Mage backup range grab. Probably Cascade Bearers for me first, then Emerald. Ball, boss, boss, Burrows? Bows. 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 Okay. And more bows for secondary. Although maybe also rain scribes for secondary. Either of those. But... Rain, rain scribe would probably be my primary, being a universalist wizard. Adaptability seems part of the MO. Okay. Now. Uh, secondary, I'll figure that out when I get there. Okay, so on your character sheets, there's a place for biography. I would definitely put down your primary and secondary branches there, just so you have them offhand. There's also campaign notes, allies, enemies, organizations. We're definitely going to be using that tab of the character sheet this time. Or you could have it all in a journal. gonna use a mixture that's fine just put some general roleplay help under uh, the sheet and have a journal like everything more detailed all right so no one's gonna use these pregens I'm gonna make them vanish he killed them all I didn't kill them. I sent them I back to the Fit Pathfinder Tell Society. <laughs> All right. Is someone going to play a spider? Oh, the Anansi people? The Anadi, yeah. Yeah. I would like to play, if it's okay, the, the Shisk, because they're all about, like, learning stuff. Like, their whole thing. They're like people, but they live in caves. Uh, yeah, they're like vestigial birds. Yeah, birds, basically, they're like bony, feathered people without wings. They're not the what's that? There's the crow race too. I was like, ah, crow, Tengu. crow, but uh, I've already made that joke. Well, it's the Pathfinder Kenku. Yeah, same exact thing. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. I I always. I thought the shisk looked more like porcupines than birds. Who the shisk? Oh, they, they definitely do, oh, yeah. but their lore is that they're, like, used to be birds, and they just have the feathered weird quill things. In them. Yeah. Also, the cat people, and they have uh, intelligent orcs in the yep. jungle. Cat folk. I do love the cat folks. Thanks, B. Ah, the miner should be Uzunjati? 
Uzundati. Yes. Because another thing with the background of the bony bird people is uh, they're all about not, they don't really write stuff down. They kind of just have a innate knowledge that's passed down through generation. They're not innate, but they have knowledge passed down through generation. Mm -hmm. They don't have a written language. So is anyone unfamiliar with how to build their character? Only as much as I typically am. Uh, I did notice that one of the feats did not work very well, but other than that, it seemed good. Good, 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 good. Ever since they added in the ability to do the ability scores inside a foundry, everything's been so straightforward. I hated linking that third-party site just to calculate ability scores. Well, it would have been a nightmare with this because, like, you can't do the free art type in that, which sucks. No, oh, that poor child is possessed. Play a fun game called Happy Scream or Angry Scream. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I have a two-year-old right now who is uh, still practicing fake cries. It's pretty hilarious, so. I get it. About to be right back in that boat. Actually, my next child is due tomorrow. We're getting induced. Oh, boy. Oh. Congrats. Well, I, uh, you know, enjoy whatever sleep you can get. And uh, uh -huh. how about that? <laughs> Luckily, we got some family coming in to help out, but it is going to be fun. It'll be good, though. Now I've got to find me a background. Ah, yes. Yeah. Well, Backgrounds. How were you sponsored? That's a very good question. I pretty much, based on the idea for my backstory, would probably take sponsored by family. Marol, it's sponsored by village. Okay. Underground people. Is anyone go, a, go ahead? Unsponsored. Unsponsored. Oh, God. Just showed up. I'm here to learn. They're like, who the hell is this guy? I can only That's... eat Raymond noodles. Yeah. No, uh, I, I I have a backstory for the character already. I was like, I'm either gonna play it in this campaign or something else. So I'm just gonna write it down. <laughs> is it? <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Okay. Is anyone going to take sponsored by unknown? Um, is that the stranger? <laughs> I'm sorry. You mean sponsored by Stranger? Mm-hmm. Which is basically an unknown. Yeah, that one sounds super interesting, but it doesn't just—it just doesn't fit with my character. And he's a warlock. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna go with unsponsored. Okay. Myself. That's fine. They don't all have to be different. It's perfectly fine. I had uh, I had plans in mind for the uh, sponsored by stranger, sponsored by unknown. Um, I'm okay to switch. Like uh, my character story does not need to be unsponsored. So if that you think would be an interesting thing, I can fit it in easily. Uh, do not do not feel obligated. That was just something I was I'm... playing around with. No, 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 no. I, I don't feel obligated to do anything. I'm, I'm always for adding some spice. Uh, and my character otherwise is, you know, plain Jane. The only interesting thing is that uh, she's from Alkenstar. And, uh, yeah. That's so. where mages stand out. In the bad that way. That is in a very bad way, yeah. Uh, well, she's a, a bit of a miscreant orphan. So uh, she's not allowed to go to the mage college there. So she basically, my story right now is that she sent a letter and then started her trek here. And she's going to show up right as uh, class starts and be like, so I sent you a letter. 
<laughs> I'm here. But we can do the sponsored by stranger because that also works. It's just a different uh, jumping off point. No problem. Uh, how much liberty do yes, you want me that. to take with the stranger? Do you want to know in advance who they are as the uh, the player, or do you want to be completely surprised? Um, I can do completely surprised. It might just need a hook because my the way my character is set up with the thaumaturgy is kind of weird <laughs> to get all that in there. But uh, you know, I'll, I'll send that over to you and. Uh, you can see what you would want to do with it. No problem. I already know who it's going to be. I just Excellent. needed to know whether or not I was I was going to tell you initially at session zero or w whether or not we're going to find out no, down the I line. I think if it's done by, like, I got a letter or something like that, <laughs> or, you know, messenger uh, through there, and I just don't know, that's great. Yeah, that's fine. But does this school cost a bunch of money to go to? That's so. It's how much you can tell I haven't read through the, the AP because I don't even know the answer to that. Money. Yeah, that's another thing we're going to talk about and how much money you're going to get as students because you get a stipend. We get paid to go to school? Uh, yes, you are a talented person and you deserve the best possible chance to succeed. This is how oh, academics really should fantasy. work. Really is a fantasy. <laughs> Bless you, and yes, well, it does for the actual talented people. It's called a scholarship. Bless you. Physically talented, perhaps. Well, I guess there's academic scholarship. As <laughs> I say, there's academic scholarship. Like, Wait, I'm oh. dumb. I'm just dumb. Hold on. <laughs> Where do you work out? The library. <laughs> You're hired. Watch me fold this phone book. And I shouldn't say for the talented academics, it's actually just the ones with pedigree. Because some of the dumbest people I went to school with were scholarship kids. Yeah, and their well, families also, own businesses. Just gotta sell yourself or have somebody to sell for you. Uh, sell the people. lesson I really wish I had known at the beginning was like, your job when you take a career is not to get better at your skill, it's to build your brand. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, that one was Depending very on much your... true. Depending on your job. A lot of jobs skill is skill based. <laughs> yeah, but you got They are, like, but like the, the difference between being good at something and being great at something are often minimal, so like by just doing the job, you will improve at it. But I if mean... you do that and sacrifice building your brand, you will reach a ceiling very quickly. I love that we have this adult perspective looking back at students that you're going to bring in as the characters. Yeah, it should be interesting because uh, I went to college as an adult already, so <laughs> I'd have, I did not get the typical college experience. <laughs> And I'm considering going back to school at 30, so I feel ya. I did. I went to grad school at 30, so. Yeah, I didn't go to undergrad yet. So, so my job, if I retire, they'll pay me to go back to school after I retire. So, we'll see. But for now, I've gotten this far without going to college. I feel pretty proud about that. Yeah, I mean, I do alright. I just kind of kind of over the industry. No, yeah, it's trades. I've got yeah, my, my degree. Uh, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. No, You're you good. Go. go ahead, Bramble. I told you it would be polite and we would fight. Go ahead. <laughs> the thing is, I will ramble, so... Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> fine. Let other people go. That's uh, fine. Yeah, no, I went to... Uh, my, my career field is one of those things where the you will learn nothing in school that will be practical to what you do the only value in having it is so that you can get an interview yeah that's that's true somewhat sad it is and, sad and if you're it's, in, it's absolutely oh, sad if, so if you're in development you can get an interview with a boot camp nowadays which is even more sad nah so, you you can get 
an interview with a boot camp in shitty places, but you're not getting a real good job most of the time. Mm. So, no, but it's a starting it's a starting point. <laughs> so, plenty of degrees under my belt. Plenty of work as an analyst. Absolutely no luck when it comes to jobs. So, I started yep. building my skills. Biggest mistake ever. Yeah. Well, I went to and undergrad now? for mathematics and then realized I don't want to do this, so I uh, switched to something practical, and that was kind of fun. Oh god, I and am now a mathematician. Is the Bramble Bear. I'm everything you rejected, sir. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, I had this uh interesting thing because you know it was 2002 and i was just getting out of school realizing i didn't want to do that and there was this company that uh i just heard about called google and they had been like hey we need people to come work for us would you come do that and i was like sure so i decided to go do that and that was not a stupid decision because i ended up working there for like seven years through an ipo and everything but oh nice you know that moved me off to many other things and you know, now I sit in executive levels, but uh, then COVID happened and my company yeah. decided to go under. And now I have six month interview cycles to see if I'm going to get a job. <laughs> yeah, it's the same for me, even with unskilled labor. Y you think with unskilled labor, I would never be out of a job with like retail or factory work. But it's just like, oh, dear God. I need food. Yeah. Well, I'm in the thing where I, I have a uh, a backup here at my in-laws, but they live in something that's worse than hell. I probably would want to be in hell more than Florida. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Oh, God. Well, now Wasn't that we've all... recently... Go ahead. Wasn't it recently a hurricane in Florida, like last week? Yeah, it literally missed where we were at. It, like, came around us. You have to understand. Right at us. When it comes to Florida, apocalypses happen every year. This place is an apocalypse. All you have to do is walk outside on a sunny day, and yeah. you're like, God, why am I here? Mm hmm So, now that we've all talked about our life and regrets, I think we're in a good position to start over as students at this magical academy where we're paid to go to school. Oh, man. Good segue. You should be a game show host. I know, right? I Nothing else. I've built myself as an entertainer more than I have a person who railroads people as a GM. While I may be the voice of the narrator, you are the people who are going to drive the action in this campaign. All I can do is react to the prompts you give me and give you prompts in return, and hopefully we'll feed off of each other. should work um how is everybody on role playing and what to what degree do you want because i'll go like full on but i'll also meet you where everybody else is i go 60 40 as a rule to start and then adjust myself based on what the players want you are not eating what does microphone. 60 40 mean 60 40 means 60 percent combat 40 percent role play that way, no one's bogged down by either. And that generally is the rule of thumb when it comes to D&D &D 5e. Okay. Uh, well, what I meant by that question was not how much combat are we going to be doing, is how much of getting into character do we want to do? Because that has varying degrees. And that's more Already. a question for the players than the GM. Mm -hmm. Pretty much... I'm thinking like 80 to 90% in character. If that makes any sense, like in terms of percentages. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Like, we'll do most of the things in character. Yeah. Yeah, basically. And if it's out of character, I'll say like, oh, my character will do something or like out of character, I'll make sure to announce it. Dimension. Well, this is interesting. This will be the first campaign that I played where I didn't have camera. 
<laughs> so I have to figure out how to translate my normal style uh, into spoken language. So that might be interesting. I can help you with that, sir, because I have a special tool called uh, the token magic that can help you as well as program animations to be done on macros as well. So that can help with one second. Here. I'm sorry. Sorry. Hey, uh, I have to help my cousin grab a table for my garage. Can I let you go um, or can I bounce or you are an adult and capable of making your own decisions. Well, yes, I just didn't want to leave randomly, but yeah, I got to take care of this. I'll be back. Or That's fine. you guys will be done by, by the time. Have a good one. Yep. Boy. I don't even remember what I was saying. About RPing and how... Oh, uh, the, uh, the like token magic thingy. Ah, yes, the token magic. It is very helpful in the other campaigns. Not only can it do a wide variety of emotions, it can also program in to macros some animations, as well as spell effects and whatnot. And I've even done little dances and dodging and whatnot with it as well. And with the JavaScript and whatnot, I can uh, do little fancy things to have ready for you. So let's say that you uh, do nothing except cast Electric Arc, like one of my other wizards. I can have that ready for you as well. I can also enable automatic animations. And with the token tool and macros, we can program in a little of that body language or expressions. Okay. Let's take a look at it. It'll work out either way. I'll adjust. It's mm -hmm. the uh, benefit of you know, doing this for a while. I personally have never used cameras with these. I I didn't even start doing it uh, like online until rather recently, like in the last year or so. Uh, you know, the, the whole thing's been a bit of a switch for me. Yeah, beginning of COVID, I had some culture shock with it too, but that's when I was still on roll 20. Oh God. I find it really good to use cameras because um, I get to see all the memes my players make about me and random people that enter my room. Yeah. Yeah, I don't usually use a camera, A, because I don't have one, but B, because my background, I'm in the middle of my own living room, so. Yes, plus you have the children running around and everything. Exactly, yeah. Uh, not be conducive to the environment and throw everyone off. There, there is chaos yeah. happening. I hear it. Always, I mute myself as much as I can. <laughs> That's okay. But as for RPing, I'm not great with it, but I do my best, and it, uh, it makes some very dumb moments, which is awesome. But uh, I'm up for how much everyone else feels like. Are you playing our barbarian? No, I am the spellcaster. The sorcerer, yeah. Yeah, a wizard, wizard, okay. Oh, so you'll be a wizard and a druid. That's interesting. Yeah. You can make it work. You could just be, uh, you know, the uh, bookwormy silent type. It, it seems like you can do... You could put however much into the other one. Like, you have to take the druid background a feat, but you don't have to use it as much as you need, I guess. it's. I mean, it's a feat that you want to use, but you can still be mostly a wizard with just, like, some druid spells and stuff. Yeah. Uh, the biggest thing with taking the druid thing is they have their restrictions uh, based on what area they take, so you might want to look into that. Yeah. Like things that they're not allowed like the to armor. do. armor. Yeah. The whole metal armor thing with some of them. Which shouldn't be a problem for me, but I'll figure that out when we get there. We're still level one. Hooray. Yep. Something else that I'm um, going to prepare. Oh, go ahead. No, please, you go. You're talking about an important thing. Nope, no, I'm not. I don't even remember what I was going to say now. Go. Oh, okay. So, I have to warn you. When we begin session one, you're all going to get a group interview, even if your characters don't know each other. This is standard practice for the school. Got it. And, based and if we fail... Do we just, like, need to make a new character? You, 
first of all, you cannot fail the interview. That's not how it works. The answers are going to be open-ended and testing other things. And at the end of that interview, you might get, you know, a little bonus. But it's basically a character building moment where we get to look at your, uh, your student and their answers to the questions and see, you know, like what makes them special or what makes them who they are. And it's weird because we talked about interviews. Yeah, it's funny how things link up. Yeah, it's almost it's That's almost so like weird. someone planned that. Mm -hmm. So before we go today, do you need anything else from me? Graphically, animations, specific things that you'd like in the campaign, like modules, which I've already uh, pinned for the GM screen. Well, I mean, what's the availability that we can send you things during the week? Like, is that an yeah. issue or do you need things like on your weekends? Like, I'm not sure what your availability is. So the reason why I made this uh, private uh, channel for you is so you can send things to me throughout the week. And if I'm not able to get to things through, uh, by the weekend, I will say so. But usually, since Discord is up all the time and whatnot, you can post things here and I can read it at my leisure. Because I do have a 50 to 72 hour week, but I still make times in the evenings to look over things and get things prepped. Gotcha. So, that's, it's also a good question because now I'm going to tell you a very important rule. Never DM me. DMs are only used for recruitment and I only accept one DM per uh, direct message per person. I cannot allocate time to answering questions in direct messages because oftentimes it is common questions that everyone has or needs answered, and when they see it answered in the channel, like you have here where everyone is, that makes it more convenient for me so I don't have to copy-paste responses or continue a conversation I've already had. So the best way to contact me is in channel. And just at me, I'll eventually get to it within 24 hours. I promise you, I even did a 15 question survey to players that had been under uh, me as a DM for a whole year and they were brutally honest with me. I'm very good about getting back to people. Sounds good. Alrighty, yeah. so before we, before we leave for the day and conclude session zero, is there anything else you need from me? Any other questions you'd like to ask? Uh, all right. So, generally, I was think I was wondering. Like, I do know that generally evil characters don't really fit in in this campaign. But what about slightly evilish? You can you can be a rune lord or whatever else. You can be an evil character. I'm not going to diminish that. If you want to be slightly evil, you may be slightly evil. However, that doesn't mean you won't fight a greater evil. But I was thinking, like, in my backstory, by the way, uh, I would, like, introduce maybe, like, three characters that would be connected to mine and backstory that could be around the school, mm -hmm. which I hope you're fine with. That's perfect. You can use fun. them whenever you, and however you want. It's just... No problem. So long as I can pick their race. Oh, sure. Excuse me. I mean, I'm... Ancestry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, basically. I mean, I'm planning on playing a human, so I would most likely have a brother who would most likely be human, but and an aunt. But the third character I'm still thinking about, but that's all up to you. No sweat. Now, with certain information like that, I would ask you to also post in the channel as well. I am extremely trusting of my players not to metagame or act on information that their characters do not have. And I need to maintain that trust. 
So if you say that other people don't know certain facts about you, then I will take it at face value that other people will also respect that, until which time you decide to divulge that information within game. Yep. Alright. I'm pretty sure I mostly made my character, at least uh, stat-wise and abilities. Okay. Uh, how much backstory would you like, Grample? As much as you're willing to give. I don't, uh, I don't force anyone to do something they don't enjoy. So if you tell me, hey, I came from this place and I want to learn magic, that could be enough. Or you could write me a couple paragraphs. It all depends on what you're willing to invest in the character. But I will say this, the more you invest into a character and the more interested I become in them, the more I invest time into things for them for the campaign that I have to work with. Yeah. I really don't know where my character would come from because I'm not experienced in the lore of the Pathfinder universe, but... Well, That's what, okay. what are you thinking about as a character? I can help you with that. Basically, here's an idea. I would like for one of my parents to be... a uh, character's parents to be generally <laughs> sort of like... not... kind of like... a mixture between a merchant and a... Gangster. Okay. And I don't um, know where. And it would be very much like, um, like those uh, older, like I don't know which year, like but mobster. Basically. What? Like mobster, like in the fifties. Yeah, that basically, but uh, okay. maybe not. Maybe a bit more modern, just maybe okay. like seventies. Okay, you probably so you have a couple choices there that really make sense. You have uh, Alkenstar, which is like steampunky area. That place is corrupt as hell. In fact, the whole government is corrupt, and merchants and uh, like gang bosses are all about that place, uh, which is also where my character is from. Um, you have Absalom, which is where a merchant uh, would fit in. That's like the mega New York island that's there. There's millions of people there, so. Uh, someone uh, that whole story can fit in uh, almost blindly into that space because there's so many people um, and yeah so those are the two that jump out off the top of my head I'd have to think a little bit more about other places mm -hmm. all right I'll probably leave it just a bit open-ended it doesn't really matter where just g the general geography and probably people for my backstory that's perfectly fine. You don't even have to say your origins. All right, I'm going to have fun with this character. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Having high intelligence is ridiculous for what I, it's like. You gain trained in the number of additional skills equal to two plus your intelligence modifier, which is four. So I have like plus I'm trained in like all the skills. Yeah, uh, don't forget your languages. Yeah. Languages yes, are I extremely have, important. So many languages. I have here. Hold on. What do I have? Six or seven languages? Six. I have six languages. Hmm. You little My polyglot. God. I have. Uh, I have thirteen skills, which two of them are lore. So. I don't know. That's a lot, probably. Uh, I have every skill. Every? <laughs> yeah, every one of them. Wait, which which class? Thaumaturge. And I'm using the tome implement and then background setup and everything. I end up... I can't have all of them at once, uh, but I can, on a day, change uh, to any set of skills. I have all but four of them permanently, and I can take two of the other four uh, and change which one they are daily. I mean, I'm fairly certain that by... I don't know how far this campaign goes in levels, but level if 20. we go at least up to level 10, which I think we definitely will, I'll probably be trained in all skills at that point. Yeah, campaign takes good. you from 1 to 20. Ooh, Ooh, full, full, full course. Yep. This is, this is meant as your entire academic career 
and uh, the pinnacle of your power. You will reach it. We'll see. Oh, by the way, I get from the background, sponsored by family, I get lore in a specific place. What is that specific place? Uh, the place that your family is from, more than likely. Uh, all right. Okay, so that will probably be then also why I'll need to determine the actual city slash nation. Mm. Absalon is always a good default because everyone, it's a big melting pot. Yeah, I'm just thinking that if I pick this, maybe I would be too big of a fish. Mm -hmm. Or at least one of my parents would be then. Oh, if you get one. yeah, yeah. So another recommendation I could make, uh, Tianzhen. It's basically the Eastern Kingdoms, uh, the Asian kind of uh, nations and whatnot. They have a lot of gangsters with the Golden League. Oh, yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. And they have a ton of merchants, it's the, too. Yeah, it's the, the Asian theme place, too, that works out very interesting. And yeah, they have, like, the Silk Road and stuff. Works out well. Mm-hmm. All right. I'll generally ask him more, and I just wanted to... Of course. We'll sort of get the general ideas. And if you need the book, I have the World of Lost Omens that I can link you. And you can take a look at all the nations. Uh, sure. Alrighty, guys. Do you need anything else before we go for the day? Nothing that's urgent. I am good to go. By when do you need Which the backstory? You spell list? Uh, by session one. I don't need it, you just need it. All right. Like, I, I just gotta do my spells. Besides that, I think I'm pretty good. I I will literally treat you as a template in game until you reveal facts to me. I, I will then become a sponge and then that sponge will change shape depending on what you contribute. Alrighty, guys. Alrighty. It was a pleasure all right. meeting you all, and I I gotta say it was uh, it was more engaging than uh, my previous uh, session zeros and whatnot, and I'm very impressed with some of your knowledges. Yeah, I like this. Yeah, yeah so it seems like a good group. It's the first time I've not had a a kid or somebody intentionally trying to make a joke character in a while. So okay, so full disclosure again. Had a had a person in Empire of Ghouls play Chaos, who was basically the Final Fantasy Lost in Paradise guy, who is just like every other sentence, I'm here to kill Chaos. And for this recruitment, for this game, I kid you not, had a person say, uh, you know, like do their little spiel and say, like, I'm also not a minor. And that that just screams to me that you're a minor, if you have to say that. Yeah, if that's the way you describe your age. Yeah. 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 All right, that's it for me. Have a wonderful day, guys, and thank you very much for joining me. Ask any questions you want. I will post the World of Lost Omens for you to read over, and I hope you have a wonderful week. I look forward to uh, next Sunday. Yeah, see ya. Right. Cool. Bye. See ya. Yeah, yeah.